Okay, continuing on with chapter 12. Um, this is the end of it. Uh, slice thickness resolution. Again, another one of those resolutions we have to learn. Um, but this kind of completes the whole 3D plane, so to speak. Um, axial was front to back, lateral was side to side. Now slice thickness is top to bottom or above to below. Um, remember again, resolution is accuracy and imaging. And we need to see side to side, front to back, top to bottom. Um, so above to below the imaging plane. We assume that the plane of our ultrasound uh, image is razor thin. However, the beam has a measurable thickness that can vary with depth. Even something that is razor thin still has a thickness to it. Um, it is also called elevational resolution. So just another name, slice thickness or elevational resolution. Uh, slice, slice thickness completes the resolution chain. Again, axial is front to back, lateral is side to side. Slice thickness is now top to bottom. Uh, remember, lateral resolution was the beam diameter. Well, beam thickness determines elevational resolution. In other words, you know, the closer those two things are top to bottom or above and below each other, and we can see them as two separate individual things, then the better our elevational resolution. So the beam thickness determines that equals the elevational resolution. This is just a, a, a picture to show that you know it's not just one or it's not just two dimensional that the beam has a, a a length, a height, and a width. So what shape of active element creates the best elevational resolution? Disc shaped because we want that beam to be not only narrow, we want it to be thin as well. And if I have a, a large rectangular shaped crystal versus a small disc shaped crystal, is it not make sense that this is taller than this and this is, they're about the same width. So here, I have the best of both worlds. Uh, Disc-shaped elements provide the thinnest ultrasound slices and best elevation resolution within the focal zone. So, what transducer types have the best elevation resolution? Well, which, one are dish, which ones are disc-shaped? There's mechanical and annular. Easy as pie. Let's explain. Disc-shaped crystals create circular beams. The width of the circle in one direction indicates the beam diameter, which is lateral resolution. The height of the circle indicates the beam thickness, determining elevational resolution. So, sorry, resolution is misspelled. I just noticed that. So, it, it's circular. It's, it's as wide as it is tall, or it's as tall as it is wide. If it were taller than it was wider, or vice versa, um, it would be an oval. But we have that the same width and height, therefore we have the best elevational and lateral resolution. They're identical with disc-shaped elements. <clears throat> so then what determines elevational resolution in phased array, linear array, and convex array transducers? Well, we know that they're made up of rectangular shaped active elements side by side. But when we phase it or use the electronics, the beam is focused or narrowed only from side to side in the image. So we improve lateral resolution, right? We learned that two chapters ago or whatever it was. So slice thickness, th slice thickness is not affected. We don't change the thickness. The thickness just it is what it is, right? It still narrows and then kind of gets out wide again, or it still thins out and then gets out wide, but it, it doesn't help it at all because we're narrowing the beam. We're not thinning the beam. So how do we, how do, we do that? Like how, did, how, do we, how do we fix that? Uh, with phased array probes, beam thickness is equal to the height of the active element, then it thins to its minimum value to its focal depth, and then thickens again substantially at greater depths. 
past the far field. At all depths, the beam is much thicker than it is wide. And figure 1236 is showing that. So with these transducers, of course, axial resolution is always the best because the, the manufacturers fix the short pulses, right? Spatial pulse length. Then lateral resolution because we learned how to narrow the beam. But poor little elevational resolution, nobody likes it. I mean, we don't try to do anything for it. So one day elevational resolution went to human resources and said, look, I'm tired of being left out in the cold. Y'all got to do something to fix me, right? So they said, okay. So they had a meeting. And what they decided to do was create a new tra uh, an or an improvement or a newer transducer to fix this. This is what's called a one and a half dimensional array. What newer types of transducers have improved slice thickness resolution? One and a half dimensional array transducers, figure 1237 now. All they did was they created thinner beams with improved slice thickness resolution over a greater range of depths, side to side and up and down crystal arrangement. Remember the idea that a circle creates the best be, uh, creates the best slice thickness or lateral and slice thickness resolution, right? So instead of side to side, all they did was, and bear with me, I'm going to draw my little picture here so that I can prove this to you. They needed to find a way to get these crystals that were lined, these rectangular crystals that were lined up side by side to each other to do that. And all they did was just cut them in layers and stacked them on top of each other. So now each one of those has a height and a width very close to the same. So slice, slice thickness resolution is improved and lateral resolution is still great. So look at 1237 and that's all that picture is showing. For example, and this is for illustrational purposes only, it's not a math problem. The array may have now 700 total elements. Remember we said there was anywhere from 100 to 300 or 100 250 aligned along the face. When we cut them in layers like that and stack them, there's 100 wide by 7 high. That's We just seven-folded our, our elements. So phasing similar to that which improves lateral resolution can be applied to the seven vertical crystals. This thins the slice and improves elevational resolution. All we're doing is we're trying to get that, we're trying to make these circles. We can't, however, but we can make them squares and that still helps. So compare figure 1236 and 1237. Uh, special topics, these are very straightforward questions that I'm going to ask and just like the registry is going to ask but I, you still need to understand it. Uh, side lobes. Now these are what we call artifacts. Some artifacts are good and they're diagnostic. Some artifacts are bad. But an artifact is just something that that um, is, is uh, not real I guess so to speak. Side lobes uh, are uh, their energy created at depths equal to and greater than the focal zone that extend outside of the main beam. And I'm going to draw this picture and kind of hopefully it kind of helps you understand. Uh, these are, when you see side lobes, immediately think single element transducers. Because I'm going to ask, or the registry is going to ask, uh, what type of transducers create side lobes? Single element. And I might even say which of the following transducers creates side lobes? And if I put mechanical then that's the answer because that's a single element transducer. Uh, reflections arising uh, with these side lobes degrade lateral resolution. And I'm going to explain why. Because especially in the far field if this is my beam, this is my transducer, and I get the hourglass shape, and this is the focus, and everything extends out here, I want everything to be in here, right? 
Now, my lateral resolution is determined by that beam diameter, correct? Well, if I have energy extending out here, am I not, and my diameter is supposed to be this narrow, I'm now being told that it's like that. So that's why it degrades lateral resolution. But notice, it's only from that focal zone or focus on. It's not anything over here. Right now, this is the most important part of my image anyway, correct? This is where it narrows. I can get to the focus. I can see anything. It's only affected in the far field. So I sort of kind of can live with it. All right, grading lobes. Grading lobes are very similar to side lobes. It's still energy outside of the beam diameter. Um, but however, it occurs at all depths. These are the array transducers, the multi-element transducers. <clears throat> so even if I say, uh, which of the transducers, uh, which of the following transducers creates grading lobes? And I put mechanical and um, linear phased or linear sequential or convex. Which one are you going to say? The one that has the multiple. I would just use the two example. I would say mechanical and linear. And you would say uh, linear. Or I would say mechanical or convex. I wouldn't put all the multi-element ones unless I wanted you to say A and C or A, B and C or whatever. But just know array transducers, grading lobes. They degrade lateral resolution and reduce image quality all the way around. Okay, So I'm going to draw you another picture. Now I have these little energy shreds, I guess you can call them, all along the beam. So before it was just down here, now the whole beam is affected. So I'm saying if I pick up grading lobes, my beam is now as wide, or I'm sorry, yeah, as wide as, as those lines are, not here like it's supposed to be. So that's what artifacts do. We fight against them. Now there's ways that we can fix this, and it doesn't happen every time you turn the transducer on. I don't want you to think, oh my God, I'm getting all these crazy grading lobes. You know, we can do so many cool things to get rid of that, that you don't even notice it anymore. Um, how do modern transducers reduce the strength of side grading lobes? This is a definition, and that's it. Apodization, a process by which stronger electrical spikes are used to excite the inner crystals and progressively weaker electrical spikes are used to excite the outer crystals. They use the the weaker on the outer because that's where the energy shreds off from the beam. So it makes sense to keep all the energy in the center so you use stronger electrical spikes and then weaken it out as you get out to the outer to the outer crystals and that lessens the chance that that energy is going to happen and if it does happen then it, it's it's very very minimal but again I'm just going to ask you definition you know what is apodization or what is the process by which strong electrical spikes blah 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 you know or how do modern transducers reduce the strength of side and grading lobes you, you can understand the concept so that you can recognize the definition and understand it uh, how do modern transducers keep the sound beam narrow over a substantial depth range? Dynamic aperture. This is the process of changing the number of crystals used to transmit pulses and receive reflections. All it's doing is creating that funnel or that listening hole. So I send all, I use all my, my crystals to send out all these pulses, but I'm only going to listen with specific ones and I'm going to group them all together to where everything just funnels to the, ooh, excuse me, to where everything, I bumped the little thingy there, to where everything just funnels to the center of the, the, the transducer face so that I receive all of those. I get that listening hole or that funnel. You understand the idea. This improves lateral resolution at a wide range of depths. All you're doing is you're just, you're, you're changing the number of crystals used to transmit and receive. It's not really anything that I've ever messed with. I don't, you know, it's set, it's however it is set is good. These transducers nowadays are so good that 
you don't have to mess with anything like you did in the old days. Just understand the definition. Please don't ask how or why, or can you show me a picture? It's not important. Just memorize. And that concludes this video.